Okay, I think this is where we left off. We have the shadow of a sphere on a vertical surface. We're doing vertical surfaces. We've done shadows of vertical lines on a vertical surface, the shadow of horizontal lines on a vertical surface, and the shadow of angled lines on a vertical surface. These, these are all using the parallel light system. Uh, we still have positive and negative light where the sun's in front of the viewer or behind the viewer. We have artificial light to do. There's a lot of repetition with it, so we don't need to do all of these things all over again because a lot of them are the same. So I'm, I'll just show you as we do things that are different and new that create a, have a little bit of a, a twist to them. Um, then we could do a separate video on those, but otherwise, so much of the rules on how to do shadows they're pretty consistent on no matter where the light is. So what I want to do now though is show you one that is um, slightly different. We're going to do a, a horizontal line kind of like this one, but this one is going to be perpendicular to this vertical surface, um, kind of like this. So first let's, let's do this um, shadow of this box on the ground. This will be fast because we already this, this is we've done this, but this this is just a, um, a a group of vertical and horizontal lines for this box. So let's make um, so the ground line is going to be let's make the sun directly to the left. So ground line is going to go straight across the page to the right, and I'm going to make a light angle. Let's say I'm just making this light angle up because you can do that. There's the light angle. And then this is a shadow of a horizontal line. It's parallel to the ground. So this goes to the same vanishing point as this light does, line does. And then I can come over here from this corner and do a light angle. And I get the end of that. And then I'm doing the shadow of this horizontal line that goes to the left vanishing point. And that goes to the left vanishing point. I think as we go on, on progress with these shadows, we could do some more interesting things with them, like shadows of one object casting a shadow onto another object and maybe you know, work with more three-dimensional objects instead of like just sticks. Okay, so I did that. Um, and now we're going to do the shadow of this stick. So this is um, a lot like, kind of like this one. And this one is floating above the ground. So we dropped a flagpole down to the ground and we got the shadow of the end of the flagpole, which happens to be in the same spot as the end of the stick. So these, the, the, just dropping these flagpoles down are important with uh, things that are above the ground. I mean, this was sitting on the ground, this, this vertical line is like a flagpole. So this doesn't have any flagpoles. So we're gonna make some flagpoles. So luckily it's attached to this box and I could just drop a line down to the ground. I want to drop a line down from this end of this stick too, but I don't know where ground is. So we just draw a line along the floor like that and then where it intersects, then you get ground. So here is ground line. And then a light angle. And then here is the shadow of this stick. It's a horizontal line. So the shadow of this stick goes to the same vanishing point as that the stick goes to. And then when it hits this, then it does, the, what, the only thing it really can do is it has to connect with the stick. The stick touches the box. So this is an endpoint. And then here is an endpoint and you connect them. Anything that you, like any, um, any line that is not parallel with the surface, it's going to, like, you, you need two endpoints to connect them to, to get the shadow. See, it's not, it's kind of close, 
but it's not really the light angle. That's the mistake that is usually made with something like this. It's like, oh, well, then you come over here and you put the light angle and it's the shadow. But you can see that, that would, it's not quite the light angle. I mean, it's potentially could be, but it would be like coincidence. That'd be the light angle. Okay, so that's the easy one. So this one, let's make the the sun lower in the horizon line. So if we do this shadow of this, we'll make it, let's make the light angle like that. And then this is going to right vanishing point. And I could just do this whole thing with one light angle if I just come across here, and then go to left vanishing point. And then, well, doing the back of this, there's this corner. I don't quite like that angle. But sometimes you have to draw the box, like draw things through the phantom, so they, um, like phantom lines. And then I'm gonna use this back corner there. So there is the shadow of this box on the ground. Okay, now the stick. So we're gonna do a um, similar thing. We need to drop flagpoles down. Flagpole, run a line along the floor. Another flagpole. And then we do a shadow of this flagpole that doesn't really exist. It's just a tool we use to find the shadow. Okay, to take this angle for the light angle, put it here. And I'm not really doing the thickness of the stick. I just want no, don't want to make it unnecessarily complicated. So we're just, this is just trying to get across this, um, this lesson. So here's, um, so this is horizontal line that is parallel to the ground. So the shadow of this goes to the same vanishing point as the stick does. So here is the shadow of the stick on the ground. And then, you know, and then what? So we still have the shadow of the stick is going to be on this box. But with this one, the last one we did, you now like that was easier because it just like it hits the box and it connects to itself. But here it doesn't hit the box. So there are two solutions to this. And they both have their place. Like sometimes one is easier than the other depending on the circumstance. So here's one situation or one solution to this, is that if this doesn't hit this wall, you know, like, like this one does, then you make it hit the wall. If this box was bigger, you just extend this wall out. Right? So if this box was bigger and then it hit this wall, then what it would do is then come back and just connect to itself, just, you know, like that. If this was one big wall, and then you just stop it right there, and then you have the shadow. So sometimes you have to, to get the shadows correct, sometimes you have to build walls that don't exist. Sometimes you have to remove things that do exist. So the other, so this is the first method, and the other method is, um, is see, see this spot right there? This is where the shadow of this stick intersects the shadow of this vertical line. So this, this intersection, you could project this back to the box. Just pretend this stuff that I did, just pretend this doesn't exist. If this was not there, you can take the light angle, take the light angle and then project it 
backward like this. And this will tell you where the intersection is on the real objects over here. And then once you get this, then you just connect the two dots. So that, that is method number two. And yeah, I find depending on the circumstance, one could work better or easier than the other. Um, this one, they probably like both just about just the same. So that is, I think that, that does it for shadows on uh, vertical surfaces. Well, so we'll probably be using this a little bit more, like both of these things I have situations coming up where these come into, um, into play. And so I, I think next we'll um, do some shadows on uh, inclines.